this trilogy of work is really about austerity. What we're living through at the moment is, is a real divergence between the haves and the have-nots and the crippling effect that poverty can have, how that affects people's lives in very real ways, pragmatically, but also, and more importantly, what it does to them psychologically. With all the plays, and what you're looking for is a situation that, is, that tells more than the sum of its parts. So a group of isolated people meeting on an insecure shift in the middle of the night in a meat factory on the outskirts of town on a zero hour contract today in Britain talks about so much more than just cleaning or zero hour contracts. It actually becomes a story about insecurity. It first was written in 2013, and then it was revised in 2014 for the full version and came to the National Theatre in 2015. That was really the beginning of the, when austerity began to really hit people. And it, I think it's the defining feature of our generation of the last 10 years has been, has been these, these policies that have, that have affected so many people in such a deliberate way. Beyond Caring uh, is a piece of theatre which we made kind of quite specifically to start with for the Yard Theatre. You had these really in industrial like places around you. So there was a veg shop, there was a carpenters, there was an ironworks, and then there was a theatre. So I really wanted to embrace the fact that this play was about workers and about cleaners in particular. After 10 minutes of Beyond Caring, I wanted to leave. I thought it was terrible. And I didn't know if I was watching probably the best actors I'd ever seen or the worst. Um, it was extraordinary because nothing appeared to happen and it really shook me. Uh, and after about 10 or 15 minutes, I realised it was absolutely brilliant and spellbinding. And by the end of it, I wanted to stand up and, and punch one of the characters in the head and help another one up off the floor. And I felt very much that that I wanted to be involved in the action as an audience member, not as an actor. That I wanted to, I was, I was felt physically like I wanted to get up and help people. The lights remain on the whole time. You're sharing a floor with the actors. The actors are mopping the floor and you have to pick your feet up. Like it really was about making the audience feel like they were involved. We took all of that and then transferred it to the National, which was such a great opportunity and such a wonderful challenge because actually we were then presenting it to people who weren't kind of hipster theatre goers in a suburb of East London. They were the people who were making the laws and they were people who in some ways had no concept that the, these policies and these wages were actually real and affecting people in such a profound way. After I saw the play, I was enraged. I went for a walk up the South Bank and, and, and was so angry and felt such a sense of injustice for what I'd witnessed that I believed and was entirely sincere and, and, and wonderful acting. Um, and so I had to find out who directed it and uh, he was up in the bar um, upstairs. So I sought him out and said, uh, I don't know what you're doing next, but I am definitely going to be in it. Um, and luckily he, uh, he agreed. So after Beyond Caring, which was really set in a workplace and talked about, talked about our public life, although in a very intimate way, I wanted to talk about our intimate life in a very public way. I, I came up with this place that was this hostel and it felt like a theatrical space where something could happen today. Very early I had this couple of this mother and this son that I knew would involve him cleaning her in an act of love. And then I found this report, the Christmas families in B&B from Shelter, the first time that I met Alex, he came round to my house with Bill Rayleigh from Shelter. You know, he just let me speak and he went into depth into the things that I went into and just really wanted to know what my story was and how I was living and how I lived through that time. After I had gone through being in the bed and breakfast and the charity shelter helping me, it was very, very important to me that I gave back that I campaigned on behalf of other people that were homeless. So when Alex came along and said, look, I wanna do this play about people that are in the bed and breakfast and the whole temporary accommodation situation and homelessness that is going on within our country, 
would you be a part of it? I jumped at it. The set for love was in some ways quite conventional. There was a, a strong sense that the floor was important, there was a back wall, but within the back wall there were two bedrooms and those bedrooms we essentially wanted to feel like were classical paintings. So the door could open, there could be some beautiful side light and you could see a kind of gem of an image of someone within that room. And we continued from Beyond Caring, a sense that the audience and the actors are as one. So we had the thing we called the bat wing, which was essentially a forest of seats where they could have an actor sitting next to them receiving a phone call. So you were aware as an audience that you were constantly both watching what was happening, but that you were also being observed by other people. Janet was sort of built off of me. So I saw a lot of her within me, her pain, her struggle, her, her guilt. I saw Luke, who was a father, struggling to see, see his kids having to go through what they were going through. And, and, and that was me. I was a member of uh, Refugee Council in Stratford, which gives um, support to refugees to integrate in their society and give different sorts of uh, activity to them. I've got that email from them asking for uh, the audition with Alex for love. I remember I came National Theatre and I did the audition. There's many actors there and actors. And they selected me to do love. I was very proud at that moment. We were doing an exercise called the tightrope, where you walk on a, imagine that you're walking on a tightrope. And I said, you're walking on a tightrope where you're meeting somebody you've lost for a long time and you're meeting them for the first time. And she did this with such conviction in every fiber of her being and of her body that I felt this is a born actress who's got something so special and so truthful. And fundamentally, she has a need for theater. I remember on the first night, there was a guy standing outside, and as I walked out the Dorfman, he said, I was a carer myself up until a week ago. I cared for my mother, and, and she died last week. And this hasn't fixed me, but it will help me process. It was, it was really traumatic, but we spent 18 months, two years, living working, workshopping with people who were suffering from this. We uh, felt a responsibility to represent those people as, as, as accurately and as truthfully and as painfully as possible, because what we discovered was, was quite horrific. Watching Love, I came out of there in tears. And I kind of also felt that the way that he had done so much justice to that story, I came out feeling kind of guilty that I wasn't living that horrible life anymore. Something that I've never experienced before. You know, Alex has done years of research and I think that makes a difference to how you um, commit and feel about the character. So I've met, you know, many people like Hazel, who's the lead volunteer of a community centre and cook. And she provides a hot meal uh, three times a week uh, to people that are in extreme poverty. Hazel herself has problems as well. Um, but you don't see those. She puts those last and puts other people first, really. One thing I think that this period that we're living through at the moment will really show is um, that the inequality of opportunity and particularly the breakdown of community, we're constantly uh, up against the, the dichotomy of exploring stories that are sometimes quite extreme uh, and, and almost always involve people who would never go to the theatre. Uh, and yet we're telling them in a theatre for people who do go to the theatre. So um, there's, a, there's a juxtaposition there which, which can sometimes be celebrated, but, but it can also be um, hypocritical. And I think Alex works very hard in a very pure way to try and balance that. Beyond Caring, the first play, was about zero as contract workers. The next play, Love, was about temporary housing and people that were in a situation of temporary housing and homelessness. And this play is 
about the care system and the effects of the care system uh, historically on people and, and how it affects the rest of their lives. Some of the people that are in the care system have spoken of how at the age of 16 they had no one in their life that they'd known for more than a year. This allows us to open up a mirror to our own lives and our own need for others and what binds us to others. Although this play is absolutely like a traditionally written play in many respects, there's always this process of exploration and improvisation and writing on people, through people, and therefore to a degree with them. The most important thing is rhythm, the rhythm of life, the rhythm of what's going on, and each person has a miraculously individual rhythm, and that's what I'm seeking to compose with, I guess. You will feel like it's completely loose and improvised, and in fact it would feel like you're watching a rehearsal or a series of improvisations, but it's not. That rhythm's been worked on slavishly um, for weeks, and the rehearsal process is about trying to find that true um, nuance and rhythm, um, and then smashing out the learning of it, usually at the last minute. <laughs> My character Beth, she has two kids, one of whom has just been taken into care. The play isn't just about text, it's about small acts of human kindness. What I love about his theatre is that the audience is as vulnerable as the play. It is very intense moment for a mother coming asking for free meal because they can't provide their meal or uh, they should feel not ashamed or they should be feel proud for the purpose they're coming to and uh, I feel yeah it's it's a very tense moment there. This piece feels like it very much fits within the arc of the of the trilogy, I guess, but that it is uh, a standalone play which really sort of asks you as an audience to engage with a slightly bigger idea, which is the interconnectedness of everybody. Natasha has so beautifully worked again on creating this community centre that is about to close, in which people meet to start a choir, but a woman comes seeking solace for her child that's been taken into care from the woman who runs the community centre. And so Faith, Hope and Charity is really about nurture, about care with a, in every meaning of that word. It's a story of, of someone's search for what to do in the face of a personal apocalypse, actually. I don't really look back very much, you know, I just, I just try and move forward in a way that feels truthful. And that's very difficult sometimes for all of us, the struggle to be sincere in our lives and our work. And I want my shows to make people feel complex feelings. I want them to feel overwhelmed and I want them to feel disturbed because it's, you know, it's, it's hard to confront this reality but it's not as hard as it is for those that live it by any means.